Hi, this is Alon from the Cytrinity SDK team. In this video I'll show how you can easily produce a custom module for Cytrinity using Thunder. That is, not a dynamic module created and managed by Cytrinity, but a full-blown module in an external distributable assembly that you can tweak and manage as you like. I'm running a freshly instantiated Cytrinity site. Let's get started by opening the solution in Visual Studio where I have Telerik Cytrinity Thunder extension installed. I'll right click and add a new project. Under the Sitefinity node, I'm presented with two options the empty custom module and the non empty custom module. We'll stay with the non empty custom module, we'll create a custom module named Employees. Now Thunder gives me a wizard to help me get started. I'm presented with an option to choose my object relational mapping library to be used uh, by my custom module in order to uh, map my objects to the database. I can go with Telerix Open Access, which is the default used by Sitefinity, or I can choose Entity Framework, in which case the library will be automatically downloaded and added as a NuGet package. We'll go with that option. I can also choose to automatically restore the package whenever needed by checking this box down here. Another option I'm given is for the technology which would be used to produce the backend grid and item views, or as we refer to them, the master and detail view. I can choose to go with Telerix uh, Kendo UI library, or I can use classic ASP.NET web forms, or none at all if I want to write those views myself. We'll go with classic web forms and go next. The next screen may look familiar to anyone who's built dynamic modules within Sitefinity, although again we're creating an external custom module, not a dynamic one. We're asked to provide a name for the content type, um, in which our in our case we'll leave as employee, a developer name, which is the name of the model class to be used in code, and a field for our employee item. We have already a title, which is uh, uh, used as an identifier of this class. Let's add also a description field, which will be a long text field. We can, have, we can add a label, an instructional text for the UI, and we can mark this field as required, in which case it can also be used as an identifier. Let's add the height. We have an option for a number field, in which case we can choose between whole numbers or floating point decimal numbers, in which case we can choose the decimal places to be used. We'll use um, for the height now um, integer whole numbers. and the date of birth, which we'll use as a date time. We also have an option for a yes-no boolean field if we like. And that should be sufficient for now. Now the employees module has been added to the solution. We can see that the entity framework libraries are also added as references and they are now being resolved by NuGet. Once everything is resolved, one point to note is that by default, Thunder builds the external module with .NET Framework version 4.5, and Sitefinity's web application by default uses the .NET Framework version 4. That's why if I go to the Sitefinity web application references, I can see the employees module is added with a yellow exclamation point. In order to fix this, I'll have to go to the employees project properties and set the target framework to be .NET version 4. Now the reference is OK. Since my employees module is using entity framework as its object relational database management library, it would be good to enable automatic migrations in order for the database structure to be updated whenever data structures are changing or new fields or data types are added. To do that, I'll open under Tools and Library Package Manager the Package Manager, uh, Package Manager console. 
Here I'll set the default project to be the employees project. First I'll enable automatic migrations by running this command. And now we'll run a database update using the update database command. I should give my project name and my connection string which is valid for my Safinity um, project and execute it and we're done. Now let's go back to the Safinity backend and under administration modules and services we can see the employees module is here but not yet installed so under actions I'll choose install and now the module is installed and active. Let's go back to the dashboard and under content I can see the employee module and I can reach it and cr start creating my data items. Let's create an employee uh, record can give a height. If you'll excuse me, uh, I'll use the metric system and the date of birth. And let's create this record. We have it now saved. We have a full-blown grid item. Um, we can sort it. We have the uh, mass deletion option. We can create a new item or we can delete it right from here. These are the basic options which are already given to me. Let's go back into Visual Studio and see what Thunder is actually created for me. Let's explore the employees project for a minute. We can see that we have the employees module with all its methods already in place. We can see the module in initialization. We have a set of uh, comments which can help quite a lot if we want to plug into this code and make changes. We even have an upgrade method in we, uh, which we can populate. Under models, we have the employee class itself. And we can see that it contains all the, all the, um, all the properties which we've added to it through the wizard. We can see, for example, that uh, the date of birth and the height are not um, mandatory fields, which is why they're marked as nullable. Under the web folder and UI, we have the details view and the, uh, and the employees page, which is the grid view. In each one, we can see the actual code, which is generated for us in classic ASP.NET code. And here again, here is our grid. And here are sorting options for the grid. And here's the grid itself, the employee's master grid view, which is using red grid by Telerik. Everything here is already in place for us. We even have a resource file in case we want to make this module multilingual and we can set our we can set our strings for the UI to use. We also have a produced manager, which is, in, which is inheriting Sitefinity's manager base, base class. If we take a quick look at the methods here, we can see that we have um, all, the basic, all the basic methods of the manager and also all the basic CRUD operations that we can use to manage the employees through the provider. We also have an instantiated provider, the employee's data provider, which is created for us. And if we explore its public methods, actually the abstract methods, we can see that they are used to manage the employees. This class inherits data provider base. In order to see the actual concrete implementation of this class, we can go to data, entity framework, and go to the employee's entity framework data provider. Here we'll have concrete implementations of management of the employee items using entity framework. Let's now add another data type to our project. So on the employee project I'll right click and add new item and under Sitefinity we have the Sitefinity custom content type. 
Again, we should give this content type a name. Let's say addresses and click add. Again, we're presented with the same wizard. Since our module is already using entity framework, we cannot change that. But since we have to create new grid and item views for the backend, we can still choose how those will be implemented specifically for this new data type. This time we'll go with Kendo UI and go next. The type will be named address, also the class name. We'll leave again the title intact. Let's add a long field called street address. Let's add a short text called city and another short text called country. That should be more than enough for now and click done. One thing to note is once we're done, we're looking at the data provider class and we can see that the address field, the address items have already been added as methods to it. Everything is already in place in order for the code to work with our new data item and it's integrated into the existing classes that we already had. In order to update the database with the latest changes and additions to the model, namely adding the address field, I'll have to rerun the update database command through the package manager console. So I'll just repeat that command and we're done. Let's go back to the backend. Here, in order to refresh the, the module with all its newly added data, we'll have to reinstall the module. So I'll go to Administration, Modules and Services, find my Employees module. I'll have to first deactivate it, then uninstall it, and reinstall it. Now our module is active again. Let's go back to the back end. And under content, we can see the newly, type, newly added type address. Again, we can add records directly, just as we do with any other Citrinity module. Let's just add one record for the record. and we're done. One last thing I would like to show in Visual Studio that under the web folder we're added views for the addresses type. Here we can see the SCX and CS pages for example the master view which is the grid view and this time we can see that, that the grid is actually instantiated with a table and we have all the stuff we need to be used with Kendo libraries. So this is how you can produce custom modules quite quickly using Sitefinity Thunder and have your own full-blown external assembly which you can manage, distribute and customize as you like.